Son, I'm gonna kill my uh, my um, car one of these days doing these reviews. Um, but basically, we're back. Uh, another review, which I always love watching movies. I really had a really um, just nascent desire to walk around a movie theater. Uh, I saw the news that uh, the second largest chain of, or um, basically company of movie theaters, uh, basically went bankrupt earlier today. And I don't think AMC can do that. Um, I, I think that if, if AMC dies, basically movie theaters die. I think that's going to have to pretty much be a chain effect, which is not impossible. Um, I, I do legitimately believe that... Um, I mean, just using this movie as an example. Uh, January 2019, when Broly came out, almost a full crowd, really. Um, at the same movie theater, I believe. I'm pretty sure the same movie theater. And this one, although I had to pay Big D pause uh, money because at the time I came, they only had subs on, which I wasn't going to watch fucking Dragon Ball. And this. If you're a subs purist with some uh, grand, legendary North American franchises, basically, like... Naruto, Dragon Ball, Bleach. Is there something wrong with you? All right, like this, these franchises, they're Western actors outside of. I mean, in Naruto's case, I don't, I can't think of a single Japanese actor that I think in that universe that succeeds like Naruto or Sasuke uh, in the English world. I mean, Dragon Ball may have some of the most animated Japanese voice actors ever, but they also have Sean Schimmel, Chris uh, Sabat, uh, I mean, Kyle Herbert, like, these people just, just clear, just clear in the Western world, and I think in the Japanese world, too. I mean, those people could go to Japan and get way more daps than I think the Japan Dragon Ball actors could do here. Um, I still have to say that even though it was split, I think it was like literally three shows. I think there was one that was subs. I think there was one that had no subs. And then I think there was one that had, no, the, the, I mean like it's one that's Japanese only, I believe. I Because they gave me three options. I think there was one that was Japanese only. I might be wrong about that. Uh, there was one that was subs. And then there was one that was dubbed. And I was like, why the fuck would you even have the third one uh i can understand subs but who the fuck like subs don't make sense to me really to provide because um when i went to infinity train or moving train um the the sub one was like it was fairly packed but like most of those people were like dub watchers like, like you could even smell a dub watcher those are dub watchers so it's just like i don't think it's enough of an audience of purists that <laughs> I guess you got to supply them what you want to supply them. Like, I, I just don't, I didn't get that. Uh, but anyway, uh, I still have to say that I hope the movie theater experience is surprised. I was like just walking around looking at an arcade that's been basically dusted up for years. Uh, I was looking at, you know, just movie, uh, like the pictures to depict what the upcoming movies are. All the ones they had up there were like outdated. Uh, not all of them, but like most of them are outdated. Uh, it's not that many movies coming out that are going to theaters. I mean, it's it's sad. I mean, I don't really want to come here and get like a pedestal uh, to introduce this this video, but it is sad to see. Um, and even I mean, there's less being produced theatrically. I mean, the trailers. I saw the Avatar trailer for like the third or fourth straight movie I've seen that for. Uh, Oppenheimer. I saw that for Nope. Um, there was another one I saw as a, a retread, and then the previous movie I watched, I saw that was Nope. I saw the Paw movie. I saw that trailer twice. I mean, it's just... It's it's sad. I mean, it's, it's sad to see how, where movies are going. Um, it's good, I guess, if you don't want to go to theaters, which you shouldn't have to. Of course, it shouldn't be a, a forced decision, but... It's sad. Um, what well, wasn't sad was this movie. It was a very happy movie, very funny movie. I enjoyed the humor in this movie quite a bit. Uh, I, I can't imagine anyone who didn't. This was... 
I mean, the humor was good from, like, the little moments that kind of existed in uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly. Like, that wasn't... That was a humorous movie, actually. But, like, it wasn't, like, intensely trying to be humor. It was just good dialogue, which I think all the movies have had fairly good dialogue, especially the ones not Resurrection of F. Um... I think all the movies have had good dialogue for the most part um and humorous dialogue when tasked to do so and dialogue here was no different uh this was kind of almost closer to quality uh, or, or a slice of life than uh really any other ones you kind of get the backdrop this is a fighting movie kind of i mean it's dragon ball it's fighting all right but like the fighting doesn't take up more than like the, the the narration or the dialogue or any of that shit until like pretty much the end. I'm trying to avoid doing spoilers because it's not like it's not real. If you like really were spoiled about every plot point in this movie, I still think it would have value to watch because it is cinematically engaging. Uh, I think the CGI is not as fucking terrible as it. It, it felt like it'd be... Uh, I thought it'd be god-awful like a year and a half ago when they first started unveiling how this movie's going to be formatted. But it wasn't that deplorable. Uh, at times, like, the, the Goku... Pretty much the entire, like, Beerus planet part was fucking horrible. That looked to me to be like a Budokai 3 game... Uh, Budokai 3 anime cutscenes at point between Goku versus Vegeta. Um, which, oh my god, it's Goku versus Vegeta. That's not spoilers. Fucking Goku... Goku and Vegeta are in a fucking Dragon Ball movie. Oh, my God. Um, and then the way you see Whis looks literally... The, all of Beerus Planet shit was fucking horrible. That, to view... Like, not the actual content, but the to view it was fucking awful. Uh, some uh, You can tell where the budget kind of went at times. The budget... Everything from, like, the... Uh, when, when, when Gohan pulls up is like great to to look at yeah for the most part for the most part great to look at and i mean even like outside of the fucking models the world looks pretty good uh, to me the world looks good some of the colors they use looked good uh the models the character models it's hard to get past at points uh i think the big villain still not a fan of how he was designed but he looked he looked solid he looked tolerable uh, not as bad as you may have expected when I first... Son, I had to delete, like, apps from my phone to, like, record this video. Dude, I got a fucking freezing space on my shit. Uh, we'll try to keep this short then. Uh, but basically, I'm not gonna go with the plot plot, but I, I think the, the way the movie looks is pretty much, like, maybe the biggest point of this movie outside of some of the Gohan moments, which, uh, if you've been on Twitter at all in the past three months, they're pretty... <laughs> you've probably heard at least about a couple of them. Um, the plot, I thought the plot was, was okay. Um... It was believable, which is obviously important. God, that's a dick ass. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, the plot I thought was solid. It wasn't amazing, but it, it was solid. Uh, you could tell that it was initially a Piccolo movie, which is what it was. Piccolo was the original, pretty much the center of this movie, which he still kind of is. Uh, things revolve around Piccolo, but it was supposed to be just like pretty much Piccolo uncontested, and then it kind of got shaped in a different way by uh, basically some advice I was given to Toriyama which I think is for the best. This would not have been, I think, a very memorable movie as a Piccolo movie. I'm not sure what you would have done because every movie they do is a nostalgia trip. So I'm not sure what nostalgia you can do for Piccolo. That would have been very memorable to the majority of people, uh, which I, son, I'm living on the borderline of Tom and Paula. I'm gonna get through this motherfucker. Uh, what was I talking about? The plot, the plot was cool. Uh, it needed to not just be a Piccolo only movie, which I think everybody else kind of made it a better piece of it. Piccolo's friends and family, I think made it a better part. Um, Gohan was good at at <laughs> we got a cool Gohan moment I'm not gonna say anything else I'm not gonna be a shitter or any of that we had a cool Gohan moment which is cool in and of itself to have a good Gohan moment is good enough and we got multiple good Gohan moments um the score wasn't very noticeable to me I uh, you know they they made some very pointed jokes to kind of like throw music on at, at, at certain points that kind of reflect with the score I thought it was okay it wasn't amazing it was all right um what else uh dialogue was good plot was solid uh the colors i thought was really good as far as cinematography cinematography went colors especially towards the last uh like 20 minutes they really tried to go for like, some of the crazy zaniness that uh probably had but like 
in that model, which was cool. It looked it looked aesthetically pleasing. The colors were really good, actually. Um, transformations. I go on a fucking rant about those. I'm not sure how much time I have left. Uh, the plant, transformations were underused, uh, under depicted to say the very least. Um, so one guy, I'm not gonna say who, gets a transformation that's very inconsequential. I think it's another one that's more consequential. It's like, what the fuck's the point of getting him two? Just give him one and make one relevant because he's not gonna ever use the other one that was fucking irrelevant. And another guy gets a transformation and we don't see much of it, although it is really cool, but it's like, this transformation means a lot to the, the story, uh, uh, at least at that point, uh, the story of the movie, and it's like, can we kind of get a little bit more of this? That would've been cool, you know, it's kind of something we was looking forward to. Um, so I was like, eh. The movie just felt like very, like the, the good moments felt, there's numerous fun moments, but like the ones that make you say, ah, oh, fuck, like those are just a little bit too fleeting for me. Uh, and then the big gripe I have is just the, the nostalgia trip was not executed well to me, uh, or at least it wasn't ex executed to the fullest of its ability. If you have, if you bring it back somebody they reference the way they do, uh, and I, maybe not bring back, but reference the way they do, you would hope that motherfucker has more weight, which he had basically. Like, imagine Nappa in, in GT when he goes back and GT like sends back to hell immediately. That's pretty much what this guy brings to the table. Just stretch over like 20 times the time, maybe 200 times the time that Nappa got in fucking GT. But basically the same effect to the overall story. Uh, so... And then he has even less lines than fucking Napa had in fucking GT. It just, it just, it, it sucks. I mean, like, this is the same that you have. I'm going to do it. I'm up on another uh, video. It's going to go into more effect of how good this week and month has been for Dragon Ball. But the same that you have Black Frieza, which is, I guess, a separate spoiler that you may not be aware of. Um, in the manga, the same fucking day, you know, we get to this and it's like, if we're going to nostalgia, let's go nostalgia all the way. We have Freezer's the strongest motherfucker in the universe. We should just have something that just really makes this character stand out. That's all I wanted. Uh, I don't have much time left in this video. I know I don't. But overall, in a truncated format, I thought it was a cool movie. Uh, it wasn't comparable super to the Broly at all to me. I mean, Broly was like legitimately like close to a nine, in my opinion. This is like a seven. It's fun. It's very enjoyable. It's more enjoyable than your average seven, definitely. But it's it's just a couple things that I think maybe because i was expecting a little bit more in the way of non uh, or just moments that i think would, would translate outside this movie like pretty much nothing in this movie outside of one big thing should probably matter in the grand scheme of things and this movie just kind of is its own little nugget it's it satiates it, it kind of quenches your thirst it's not as consequential as i think broly was or Broly could be uh, depending on what the anime does whenever that comes back. I, 7 out of 10, I thought it was a good time. I think you should watch it. Only an hour and 40, which is, you know, it goes by pretty quickly. Uh, and, I mean, it gives light to some guys that are very irrelevant in the, the scope of the Dragon Ball Super Universe. So, nice to have a movie that basically has no Goku and Vegeta. And also, the after credit is really enjoyable. I definitely recommend watching uh, to the after credit. That's it for me. Sorry for the fucking... I don't know. Sorry.